my name's Hilary Wood. I'm Head of Gardens here at London Palace. I'd like to welcome everybody to the, really, the hub of the gardens. Um, as you can see, we're in the greenhouse where all the summer bedding is grown for the gardens. Huge amount of work, um, as you can well imagine. Anybody that works in greenhouses or veg gardens, it's a really busy time of year. Um, the work actually here starts back last October. Uh, cuttings are taken from the plants are actually out in the Italian garden. Um, so they're brought on and as you can see, if you pan round, there's the standard geraniums. Um, beautiful fuchsias, standard fuchsias. They all have to be pinched up. It's rather like the fourth bridge in here, to be honest. You get all the way through and you think, yeah, good job done. And then it's time to start all over again. It's the way it is this time of year. Um, as a, a few sort of handy tips, uh, we actually grow some host plants. Now, host plants attract any pests that you may have in the greenhouse it's a very good indicator whether you need to do a little bit more. Uh, these are actually aubergines. Uh, these are trapped a pest called thrip, which if it gets onto your plant, it really begins to suck the life out of the plant. So you will find that any pest will go naturally straight to the host plant first. Um, you might also see the light yellow sticky traps that are hanging. Again, the colour is really important, the yellow. Again, the thrips are attracted to that and they are sticky, so once they're on there, obviously there's no getting off. But there's little squares on the traps as well. Uh, that's, again, another indication of how bad you've got anything, any pest diseases in here. There's a huge variety of host plants that can be grown. Um, nasturtiums, they're really good for aphids. Double whammy with that one because you can eat the flowers as well. But they're, they're a good one to grow in greenhouses or buy any crops that you put outside. But um, say, just Google host plants and there's a whole list of, of things that really, really do work well. Just walking through the garden's yard now. Um, Unfortunately, this area is closed off to the public, so many of you won't have even seen this, which is another really nice um, thing to be doing this, that you get really get to see behind the scenes. Um, up on these walls, um, this is the cherry blossom coming out. Uh, these are the morella cherries, which uh, are used in cooking. So once the cherries develop, we actually have to net them because uh, we try to get to them first before the black blackbirds do. So they all get netted later in the season. Then they, all the cherries get picked and they go up to be bottled either for jam or a hot dessert in the winter months. Uh, so I just uh, walked you through. We have our own biomass boiler here which heats all of the greenhouses. Uh, the potting sheds, etc. My office, a very important area to keep nice and warm. Um, and also the butterfly house. So this is the hopper where the tractor comes along, tips all the wood chip in there, it gets fed into this area, an auger takes it through to feed the boilers and heat the water tanks. Um, the wood chip actually gets the, the trees are grown on the estate and then chipped, so it's very sustainable. I'm uh, just going to enter into the walled kitchen garden. Um, this is an absolutely beautiful area. Uh, 12 acres originally. We have a lovely big, big orchard over the far side there. Uh, surrounded by 15 foot high brick walls, so obviously it's in its own microclimate. Um, all, all manner of fruit and vegetables are grown in here. Uh, we'll be going into the vinery shortly. Uh, we grow melons, cucumbers, courgettes, all under glass. We just see one of the lads at the moment. Um, he's putting a whitewash on the windows. 
Uh, this is to protect the vines. It stops the leaves being scorched. And as we know, um, we're just getting it on there and then they predict rain tomorrow, but it's got to be done. We've just emptied the finery here at Blenheim. These vines are reputed to be at least 200, 250 years of age. And I think you can see um, full of woodworm and everything. So uh, the previous foreman remembers them looking like that and that was 50 years ago. So I think that age is pretty good. Um, so there's two cultivars in here. White cultivar is Muscat of Alexandra and the black cultivar is Madrasville Port. Uh, we actually show these at the Wisley RHS show, which uh, is usually beginning of October. I know a lot of the flower shows have been cancelled, um, but whether the autumn fruit and veg show will still go ahead, I think we'll have to wait and see. Uh, so the, the, these go up in pairs, pairs of white, pairs of black, single black, single white. Um, so they go up to London to be shown on special boards that have been made. And then we always bring them back and display them in the private apartments for his race to look at. And hopefully we've won some good prizes. Um, into the peach house. Um, unfortunately you can't smell them, but the smell is absolutely divine. We produce very roughly about 300 peaches per season in here. Always, always ready for Ascot. Um, his race used to take them up to picnic up there, which was a, a tradition and a funny tradition that um, it didn't matter what, what the weather was going to throw at us. He, he thought the peaches would be ready. And actually, nine times out of 10, they always were. These trees aren't that old. They only tend to last up to 25 years. Um, they are an absolutely delicious peach. It's a white, white-fleshed peach called Peregrine. Um, they are absolutely stunning. So again, the work will commence in here. Well, obviously they've all been tied in already, so a lot of work already has been carried out. The next work is to, and it seems wasteful, I know, is to start thinning the peaches out. We have to do this because um, if we don't thin out here, these peaches will carry on growing, but you won't get one decent sized peach. So as wasteful as it looks and sounds, you do have to thin out. So here, for instance, you've got three growing very, very closely together. It does seem a shame, but off that one's got to come and this one leaving that one peach to swell and to grow to a lovely size again we've got three here in quite close proximity but i probably i will take this one off the back literally because it's going to start growing against the wall so we'll get rid of that one i think we would be okay leaving those two they're at quite a distance so I've got to go through all of these and thin out within the next two to three weeks. So we're up in the main area of the formal gardens and this lawn that we're standing on now is called the South Lawn. It's approximately two and a half stroke three acres of lawn that is treated like a lawn. Um, it's cut twice a week. We cut it twice a week because it saves us a lot of work in having to pick the grass up. If we keep it nice and short and as I say cut twice a week, it saves bringing a machine up here to cut the grass. Uh, it takes about two hours just to do this section. For the first year I haven't actually used any fertiliser on the lawn. Instead, I've gone for a natural seaweed feed. Um, this will be applied on a monthly basis. Uh, I've only, there's only been one application yet, so it's quite early days to say whether it will work, but I just wanted to get away from using fertilizers. 
Um, so hopefully, as I say, the sea will, seaweed feed will work and that's the way we'll, we will continue.